everyone and welcome back to Uptown as we are on our week 6 of going through the book of Romans. So I hope you're ready to learn more about what a life of faith actually looks like. But here's a few things to remember. That Romans is a book in the New Testament and Paul wrote to Christians who lived in Rome. And he wrote this letter to teach them a whole bunch of things about their faith and what it means to put your faith in Jesus. So, um, can you think of any words that rhyme with faith? It's kind of difficult. Can, can you think of any? So, this is what I found. These, these are the words. Haith, wraith, faith, and lath. Oh yeah, and chicken. No, I'm joking. Chicken wasn't part of it. But that's, that's basically what I found. And I'm not joking. These are actual words. But I actually didn't know them. I had to be told them because I don't even know what they mean. But anyway, good luck to you for finding a word that rhymes with faith. Um, but fortunately for all of us, today is not about finding words that rhyme with faith. Uh, otherwise, I think we would all have a problem. Yeah, it would be a bit of a problem. But hey, let's worship. It's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's not for selfish reasons, it's not to make us cool, it's not to make us popular or be too cool for school. It's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. To bless all those around us, to bless all those in need, to bless those God has called us to, whoever that might be. It's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts, it's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. So, what exactly are these gifts? Let me tell you, but first, are you ready? There's prophecy To prophesy There's service That could be my thing There's teaching Is that maybe me? Encouragement mm, Could be There's also generosity mm. And leading if you're called to it But don't forget mercy That too And do it cheerfully We, we get, get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us And make this life we're living count We get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us And make this life we're living count It's all about the gifts It's all about the gifts It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless It's not for selfish reasons It's not to make us cool It's not to make us popular Or be too cool for school It's all about the gifts It's all about the gifts It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless To bless all those around us To bless all those in need to bless those God has called us to, whoever that might be. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. Okay, I think I get it. Let's recap one more time. There's prophecy. There's service. There's teaching. Encouragement. There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it But don't forget mercy and do it cheerfully We get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us And make this life we're living count We get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count There's prophecy There's service There's teaching Encouragement There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it But don't forget mercy And do it cheerfully Closer to you Every day to know you more and 
today we are looking at the words religion versus relationship. Well, okay, it's, it's not quite like that. Well, it's sort of, no, no, actually it's not like that. Um, has anyone ever heard of the word religion or relationship? Well, I'm sure you have heard about it sometime, but what do they have to do with our faith? Or more specifically, what does that have to do with us putting our faith in Jesus and being a child of God? Well, Paul writes about these things in the book of Romans, and there is definitely a reason why. So why don't we see what the problem was and then make sense of this religion versus relationship thing. Our story for today is found in Romans chapter 2 and 3. In these chapters, Paul is writing to the Jews who lived in Rome, who weren't living in a way that was pleasing to God. Many of these Jews knew the law of God well, and would have said they were close to God, and obedient to His law. But in fact, they weren't living these things out. Paul writes to them and says, You think you're a guide for the blind, and a light for those who are in darkness. You think you can show foolish people what is right and teach those who know nothing. You have the law, so you think you know everything and have all the truth. You teach other people, so why don't you teach yourself? You tell others not to steal, but you yourself steal. You hate idols, but you steal from temples. You brag about having God's law, but you bring shame to God by breaking His law. Paul goes on to say, A person is not a true Jew if he is only Jew on the outside. A person is only a true Jew only if he is a Jew inside. Paul was telling the people that having a bunch of rules would not make them right before God. And what was worse, they weren't even keeping these rules and laws in the first place. Paul tells them that a set of rules can't save them, only a heart. And when our hearts are in the right place, it's natural that we will act and live in a way that is pleasing to God. When we truly love God, we can't help but obey Him. Obeying a set of laws and rules won't save us. It's our heart that God looks at. Do we truly love Him? And are we committed to serving Him? Or are we just trying to stick to some rules? That Bible story should have given you a bit more of an idea of what religion is versus what relationship is. You see, religion is all about following a whole bunch of rules because, well, we feel like we have to, and we feel like we have to earn our way into heaven by doing a whole bunch of good things. Whereas relationship is where we obey God from a place of deep love for Him in our hearts. You see, it's what's on the inside that counts. Rules can't save us. And in fact, God doesn't want a bunch of robots walking around who are trying so hard to obey Him to try to earn our way into heaven. He wants our, our actions and our obedience to come from a place of wanting to obey Him, from wanting to please Him, that we want to please Him because we actually love Him. So religion, it's all about the rules and it's not what God wants. He wants it to come from a place of love, that we obey Him from a genuine place of love for Him. Now, I'm sure it's clear to see that that was not a healthy relationship. There was no real love and no real care at all in that friendship. It was one person basically doing a whole lot of things to keep the other person happy so that they would still be their friend. But if you look at this, it kind of looks a lot like religion, if you had to compare the two, where it's doing stuff to earn someone's love. But now let's compare this to what a healthy friendship would look like.
Now, this friendship is one that looks a lot more real. One that wasn't based on rules or one person trying to earn the friendship of the other person and trying to run around to make sure that they would still be friends. But their actions happened naturally. The kindness to each other, you could see, was just a natural overflow of their love for each other. There was a real, real friendship, not based on doing things or stuff. And that's what relationship looks like. So in that first video, we saw we could kind of compare it to religion, doing things to earn friendship or whatever it might be. And in this one, it's a genuine love, a genuinely real relationship. Now, that is exactly what Paul was trying to say. You see, Paul was actually a very, very clever guy. And you see, it says in the Bible that we need to show through the way we live life that we are Christians. And sometimes we may say it with our mouths, but we don't act it out in person. And when we do act it out in person, it needs to come from our hearts. You see, it's very easy to say we're Christians and sometimes act like we're Christians, but if we don't believe in our hearts what is happening, then that is a very, very sad place to be. Now, how do we get it to come from our heart? Now, this is when prayer comes in. Now, we need to pray to God that He would come and help us to get our hearts for these things. You see, God calls us to act like we are Christians. But not only that, He calls us for us to have it from our hearts. So that when we do act, it's not necessarily us acting, but it's just us being ourselves. You see, we often have these rules um, that we try to, to, to put in for ourselves. But you see, rules don't save you. The process of having faith does. You see, are you going to wake up in the morning and be happy all the time? No. And sometimes it's very hard to act like we are Christians. But when we ask Jesus to come and live in our lives and ask Him to change our hearts, then it changes things. You see, when we ask God to forgive us for the bad things that we have done here and there, He really wants to forgive us but only if we earnestly and honestly believe in Him and earnestly and honestly say, God, please forgive me for the things that I have done wrong and if you are truly, truly sorry. Because we are often going to mess up and that's okay because everybody is going to mess up, but we just have to go and ask for forgiveness, but truly mean it. Okay, guys, it has come time for our memory verse for today. Now, by now, you should know it, okay? It's quite a long one, but it's been now, this will be six weeks of the same verse. So, I hope that you have it. But now, just to help you out, I'm going to give you a clue, okay? I'm going to put the memory verse up on screen, but all the words are going to be spelt backwards. And I'm going to give you 20 or so seconds to try and figure out what it is. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, here it goes. Okay, so did any of you get that? I hope that you pay close attention. Let's say it together just one last time all together. So it is found in Romans 10 verse 9. Let's go. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, you guys got that? I'm pretty sure you did. Well, let's stand to our feet and let's dance. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, you will for eternity. Romans 10 verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, yes you will, for eternity. Romans 10 verse 9 We put our faith in Jesus and live our lives to always please and choose to believe even when our human eyes can't see. Trust He holds the future in His hands, He's always with us every day. We choose to say, our God, You are the way. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that 
God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, yes you will, for eternity. Romans 10 verse 9 If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, yes you will, for eternity. Romans 10 verse 9 We put our faith in Jesus and live our lives to always please and choose to believe even when our human eyes can't see Trust He holds the future in His hands He's always with us every day we choose to say Our God, You are the way Put our faith in Jesus and live our lives to always please and choose to believe even when our human eyes can't see Trust We admit that we've got it wrong We believe that you died for us So we choose, we choose to follow you Saved by the grace of Jesus We admit that we've got it wrong We believe that you died for us so we choose, we choose to follow you Saved by the grace of Jesus We put our faith in Jesus and live our lives to always please And choose to believe even when our human eyes can't see Trust He holds the future in His hands He's always with us every day We choose to say our God you are the way Put our faith in Jesus and live our lives to always please and choose Maybe you've been viewing this Christian walk as a to-do list, the things that you guys have to do to gain God's love. Like maybe you feel like you have to go to church, you have to read your Bible, you have to pray, you have to give to the poor. But in actual fact, it's all about having a relationship with God and Him being our Father. Doing things that please Him because He loves us and we get to love Him back. And I'm going to pray now that we have that understanding that we don't do things to gain God's love but that God loves us and because of that, we can do things that please Him. So, Father God, I want to thank You that You loved us so much that You sent Your Son, Jesus. Lord God, I pray that we have an understanding and a revelation of who You are and what You did, Jesus. That we won't do things to gain Your love or to please You, Lord God, but that we can do things because of what You've done for us. And I pray that You help us to accept this into our hearts and I thank You for the forgiveness that You offer us. In Your wonderful name, Amen. You put your light in me for all the world to see. I'm gonna shine, I'm gonna shine, shine bright and free, and everyone will see your.
at the end of all of this is that he wants to have a relationship with you. He just wants to be more than a friend because he actually is more than a friend. He is a dad, he is a protector, he is a provider, and he's the one that, that really gives our life purpose. So if you don't know what we've been talking about this whole, whole morning and you like this God that these people are speaking about and the God that these people are trying to put across, I don't personally know them. I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And I really want you guys to, to repeat that prayer after me so that you can become a child of God. Because when you become a child of God, not only does your life get so much more in terms of a purpose, but you will have known for yourself who your spiritual father is, who your spiritual protector is, who your provider will be, and who the person is that gives purpose. And the easiest way to remember this is to the A, B, C's. To admit that you have sinned and that you've done wrong. To B, believe that He died on the cross for you. And to C, choose Him every single time. So please repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I disobeyed you. And I know that without you, I'm nothing. But with you, I can be so much more. I thank you that your life that was died on that cross gives my life purpose. And that with you, I can be so much more. I pray that you'd come and live in my life and that I would become a child of God. I pray this all in your precious name. Amen. Alrighty, are you guys ready for our Sunday Fun Day Challenge? Well, this one's going to take some physical ability and it's gonna take some speed. So, I wanna ask you guys, who thinks they can do the best cartwheel? Now, I'm gonna demonstrate in just a bit, but it's not just about doing a cartwheel, but I'm talking cartwheel races. So what you need to do is probably find a space outside, or if your site's big enough, you can use inside. And I want you to line up at one end of the room, and I want you to race doing cartwheels and see who gets to the other side of the room first. But now, don't give me average cartwheels. You need to do them properly. If you cheat and they look terrible, your person there who's watching is gonna say, eh, you're out. So good cartwheels and the fastest person to get to the finish line. Are you ready? Let's see how you can do it. 